Question. Is the International Monetary Fund a US machine used to subjugate developing countries around the world and keep them poor? I know, it sounds like a conspiracy theory. Like something cooked up by Snoop Dogg and Elon Musk. But, but what if it wasn't? Many presidents, authorities, and media outlets from Latin American countries, and not only countries from that region, but from all over the world, have accused the IMF of condemning them to poverty. Do you want an example? Well, Argentina and Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. Si nosotros los argentinos y las argentinas no logramos que ese programa que el Fondo Monetario impone a todos sus deudores sea dejado de lado y nos permita elaborar un programa propio de crecimiento va a ser imposible pagarlo por más que digan lo que digan a hispanic american politician against the imf what a novelty but do you want an example that is not a latin american politician perfect and we have mahathir mohammed the former prime minister of malaysia so if you leave it to the imf they take over control of the economy of this country uh, and they focus entirely on the loans, uh, not on growth, then this country will regret. The IMF is the devil, the rotten apple, the child nobody wants to play with at break time. But in spite of this, all the countries in trouble, all those who constantly criticize this organization, end up in one way or another linked to it. It's a toxic relationship in every sense of the word. Many say that the IMF is simply the diabolical arm of the US, the arm with which Washington controls the poor countries of the world. And let's see, in a way, they are right. The US is by far the most influential country in this organization. It is true that other countries are also part of the IMF and have their own voice and vote. But let's be clear, it is Uncle Sam and his allies who run the show. Between them, they account for 60% of the voting power in the management of this fund. And as you can imagine, this is no coincidence. <music> The IMF emerged with the Bretton Woods agreements after World War II. And of course, the Soviet Union, already the number one enemy after Germany, was completely left out of the picture. In other words, the IMF was set up by Western countries. Not only that, but when it came to defining which country had more influence in the organization, a system was established based on the economic capacity of each one. The more you earn, the more you control the fund. And the outcome? Uncle Sam dominated and continues to dominate by a landslide. So the IMF is seen by many as the evil financial arm of US foreign policy. But beyond conspiracies, what is the real purpose of the IMF? What are its objectives on paper? The idea is simple. When a country has serious economic problems, the IMF comes in and offers its help in the form of loans that allow the country to clean up its accounts and thus boost its development. Later, when the loan has succeeded in stabilizing the economy, the country in question has to pay back the money at a certain interest rate. And with that, everyone is happy. In essence, the IMF is something like an altruistic bank for countries in trouble. And I say altruistic because, no, its objective is not to make money, but to help and collaborate with countries in need. And let's see, while it's true that altruism sounds strange considering the high interest rates that the IMF charges to these countries, you need to take into account that many of them never pay back the money they borrow. So the interest is not for the IMF to make money, but to compensate for the risk of default. Something that, by the way, the Greeks understood very well. Greece defaults on IMF loan despite new push for bailout aid. Let's be clear. The International Monetary Fund's aid, in theory, is good, has good intentions, and can help any country to get out of trouble. In fact, Javier Millet will need international aid, especially in hard dollars, to be able to implement his longed-for dollarization of Argentina. But then, if the International Monetary Fund is so good and altruistic, why does it have half the world against it? Why do several countries that have resorted to its help end up hating it and comparing it to the devil himself? Well, the reason is that IMF aid is often more of a condemnation than a help. A very good example of this is Madagascar, a country that, beyond the amusing DreamWorks movie, has been a real economic hell for decades. Almost 30 years ago, the IMF intervened in the country, provided technical and financial assistance, and the government complied with its recommendations. And yet, the results were miserable. Not only did the supposed aid from the monetary fund not improve poverty in Madagascar, but poverty actually skyrocketed. The situation of the African island is one of the most critical in the world 
in social matters. And today, it is the prime example of many critics of the monetary fund. The question is, to what extent are these critics right? What could explain why so much of the fund's aid ends up causing a disaster? Is the poverty of many countries really the fault of a US-controlled IMF? Or are there more intricacies behind this organization? In this video, we tell you all about it. Who is right in this battle? Those who say the IMF is the devil, or those who say it's the savior of poor countries? Well, actually, neither. There are cases like Madagascar, where aid has been a disaster, but there are also others like South Korea, where the IMF really helped and was truly useful. The question is, what does success or failure depend on? To understand this, we are going to tell you about a very particular case, the Asian crisis of the 1990s. Back in 1997, countries such as Thailand and Indonesia entered a terrible spiral of crisis and economic decline. Governments devalued their currencies, accounts went into deficit, and the banking system collapsed. In short, panic set in. And visual economic community, it was right there when the International Monetary Fund arrived with its hands full of bills. Their help was initially welcomed, but things soon began to go awry. Because, you see, in exchange for the loans, the IMF forces the assisted governments to implement harsh economic measures to correct the economic course of the country in question. We are talking about measures such as reducing the budget deficit, promoting market freedom, and letting unproductive companies go bankrupt. Let's just say that the fund only gives money in exchange for a drastic change in the political course. It's shock therapy worthy of Javier Malay himself. So what's the problem? The problem is that the shocks are painful. For example, during the Asian crisis, the monetary fund forced the collapse of 16 Indonesian banks that it considered unproductive, and that added to the job cutbacks, making the situation even worse in the short term. The fund's intervention was a complete disaster. 